welcome. Thank you for joining us on the network service of the NTA. This is Nationwide, and I am Lydia ODJ Ochi. We start today on a sad note, with many pupils reported to have died following the collapse of a three-story building in Lagos. Let's now join Jennifer in our Lagos Network Center for details. Jennifer, over to you. Thank you, Lydia. Good evening and welcome to Lagos. Today is, um, is, is a, is a, is a sad, um, dark Wednesday because um, of the disaster that happened in Lagos. Now, for people living around Itafaji and environs on Lagos Island, it was a sad day following the collapse of a three-story building at about 10 in the morning. The actual number of occupants could not be ascertained. However, nursery and primary school pupils and residents were in the building at the time of the incident. Let's join Paul Omukago, who was there. Emotions are high following the collapse of a three-story building at Itafaji on the Lagos Island. The number of people trapped in the building for now is not known. However, the rescue team from different agencies comprising the Federal Fire Service, the Nigerian Emergency Management Agency, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, and of course, uh, men of the police and Federal Road Safety Corps are all on ground. We are able to make use of the, the equipment to lift some of the pillars up and then to rescue people before the coming of this very particular vehicle. We are able to use the spreader we're able to use the cutter, we're able to use the crane and other uh, equipment available to see that uh, we get the number of people that we can. Though work is still in progress, we are not yet done until we are done. It was around 10 o'clock this morning when we saw the building coming down. Everybody have to run in another way. But we later come back because it's happened as respectedly. So we have to rush in there and start to rescue some children. The building is an old building, no doubt about that, but it's never given any sort of uh, discomfort or vibration before today. We had a school on the topmost floor, and that's where we had children casualties. Uh, as I speak with you, about 24 persons have been rescued, survivors, and nine dead. And rescue operation is on. You can see Lasema, Lapska, and other Paramedic, paramedic call, uh, uh, agencies and security are on. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Governor, Akim Wumi Ambode, has visited the scene of the collapsed building to commiserate with those who lost their loved ones in the incident. For rescue operation, the governor said the Lagos State Government will investigate the cause of the incident to foster future occurrence. And I have with me in the studio my colleague Paul Omukago, who was at the scene of the disaster. Paul, you were there, and we've heard um, eyewitness um, give accounts of situations that, um, and what they observed. What did you notice and what did you gather from your report? Uh, one thing was very clear, the, the crowd was much, and uh, it was really not easy for the rescue team to gain access to the building. However, uh, the excavator from Lasema got to the spot and they are doing some excavation job. And in the process, uh, about uh, three children came out from that uh, rumble and uh, they came out alive and they were taken to a nearby hospital. There was, a, there was a school on the, uh, there? Yes, the, those uh, uh, children that were rescued were from the privately owned nursery and primary school. It was on the third floor. So how did they, did they uh, uh, give the figures of this number of student, students, um, people who were in the school before the collapse, the building collapse? Yeah, information about that is actually sketchy. Nobody was able to give us uh, the actual number of uh, people on, in, in that school. And even the name of the, the school, people in the neighborhood couldn't even tell us the name of the school. That is just a sad aspect of it. Also. Mm. Okay, but how many people are trapped now, including the kids? That too... Um, even when we spoke to, we, we approached the Nima people, they said they, they cannot uh, talk to us about any figure. Even the men from the fire service said nobody knows the actual number of uh, occupants at the time of the incident. What about 
What about but, the actual no, the number of rescued uh, um, persons? Um, they rescued? The rescued persons uh, from the uh, the story we just watched now is about thirty plus. But even that, to uh, to say that this number of people died and this number came out alive is still something that is still sketchy, because we needed to also verify from the medical team because they are best placed to tell us those who were taken to the hospital alive and those who were taken there dead. So we don't have the exact figure. We don't have the exact figure. But how old is that? Is that building? Yes, from uh, the information I gathered, the building is about 30 years old, and um, some people even said that. Uh, they even made some effort to reach uh, authorities to complain that it has structural defects, or that uh, along the line they didn't see any follow-up on their on their complaint. That's what they said. So, so how many occupants in, in the building? The number two is not known, but we gathered that uh, the ground floor were three uh, stores behind resident, first floor, second floor, resident, then the third floor, the privately owned. Northern Primary School. And, and I know the crowd situation there is a problem, watch from what we've seen in the, in, in the video. But um, right now, how many agencies are there and what's the plan for them to uh, rescue those who are still trapped in that build, in, that, in, in, the, in the debris? Okay, I think the, the agencies that are there, there are about six, seven agencies from both the federal and the uh, Lagos State uh, uh, government. And uh, what they are doing is just to try to pacify the people. A lot of them are hungry angry because uh, they said uh, for a while they actually made uh, attempts to get government attention about buildings that are having structural defects but nothing was done until this incident happened. Thank you Paul. Yeah. Well we'll keep you posted um, with happenings in, in that area and um, you'd definitely get more information from the NTA. Now we go to the aviation sector. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, has clarified that presently the accident aircraft type Boeing 737 MAX 8 is not in operation in Nigeria. The General Manager of Public Relations, NCAA, Sam Adurogboye, who stated this in Lagos, assures the flying public of their safety. Elizabeth Ewuga reports. When Ethiopian airline Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashed on Sunday, the 10th of March 2019, killing everybody on board, it became the second time in less than six months that particular plane model was involved in an accident. The first crash was in Indonesia October last year, killing 189 people on board. In both cases, there were brand new planes, but faltered minutes after takeoff and plunged into a deadly descent, leaving no survivors. No doubt investigations are on, but this latest crash has renewed questions about the safety of the 737 MAX model airplanes unveiled by Boeing in 2017 and sold as a fuel-efficient, technologically advanced upgrade to its popular 737. We should not judge that there is a particular fault until it is proven and established. They will find out what happened. Let's, let's wait for that. But for now, we don't have it in Nigeria. On allegation that an indigenous airline has ordered 10 of such Boeing 737 MAX 8 to fly the Nigerian airspace, the GM Public Relations NCAA comment. No Nigerian should expect that whatever happened now, they would have found a solution to it before they have arrived. And whatever has gone wrong, if there is any, we will inform the manufacturer to now correct it in their own. Meanwhile, the management of Ethiopian airline in Nigeria has opened condolence registers at their offices in Abuja, Lagos, Kano, and Enugu, as two Nigerians were involved in the crash, Professor Pius Adesome and Ambassador Bashua Abiodu. Ethiopian airline has also grounded all Boeing 737-8 MAX airplanes in its fleet for now. In Lagos, Elizabeth Iwuga, NTA News. ...from Lagos, back to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Jennifer. Still on the Ethiopian air crash, the federal government has joined other nations in the aviation world to formally ban the use of Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft into Nigeria's airports. The Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, who announced this while briefing journalists after the meeting of the Federal Executive Council, said this is in response to the safety concerns regarding the aircraft now being investigated. Regardless of the enormous safety records 
by this uh, machine, 77, uh, it has uh, caused concern for the world of aviation. And you know aviation is universal. Aviation is one. There is no aviation B. And therefore, whatever affects one affects the other because this craft will be flying in and out. So we have um, issued directives uh, that uh, no operator with 737 MAX uh, 8 or MAX 9 should operate into and outside of uh, our airports, pending the determination of the actual cause of the crash in uh, Ethiopia and also pending the outcome of the response of the manufacturer himself, which is Mrs. Boeing. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari also approved several memoranda aimed at enhancing safety and security in the nation's aviation sector. When we came, Nigeria was scoring uh, about world average, which is about 60%. But since then, since this administration, we've gone to 96.7% on security in aviation. And also, um, within the next, by May, will be scoring uh, above uh, 98 in security and also above 98 in safety. And this is uh, an audit from International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. And that is the focus of the government policy on aviation, to be sure that we are safe and we are secure before every other thing. And at the same time, of course, tendering to needs of passenger comfort and facilitation as is evidenced in the various airports that we have commissioned, finished and commissioned. The Senate has commenced the consideration of the 2019 appropriation bills. Senators observed that this budget has been carefully planned towards restoring and sustaining growth, investing on the people and building a globally competitive economy. Senators, however, called for the expansion of the social intervention program, the allocation to agriculture. Meanwhile, the 2019 to 2021 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper transmitted by President Muhammad Buhari has been referred to the Senate Committee on Finance. Senate received 30 nominees as chairman and commissioners for the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Strategizing on ways to improve on the nation's electoral process Mayor Ogedi reports that this is coming after the 2019 general elections. They are observers. They are not monitors of our election. With this in mind, the 116 domestic and 29 foreign observers went to the field to observe and not to monitor the process. After observing the exercise in more than 120,000 polling units on the 23rd of February, on the 9th of March, it was a case of the observer being observed, in most cases, as violence in some places became the order of the day. Very wrong one. Not even, not, not even beating. Some even, somebody died. Some persons were killed in the course of doing the so, and some order. So an observer was killed in Enugu, or shot in Enugu. Despite this experience, the observer's notes were explicit with details of violations of electoral guidelines, late arrival of materials, non-functional smart card readers, and unprofessional conduct of some security personnel in most cases. So, what is the way forward? If you can use technology to transmit elect election results from the polling unit, it will build citizens' confidence in the process. The NHU actually ensure that uh, the polling officials arrive there an hour before voting starts. And this debriefing exercise serves as a precursor to the more comprehensive reports that the Commission is expecting from the various groups. If these recommendations are implemented by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, there will going to be a great improvement in the elections come 2023 and some off-season elections before then. However, the observers will still go to the field on the 23rd of March 2019 to observe some of the elections that are yet to be concluded by the independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. After that, they will going to submit their reports officially to INEC for deliberations and implementation. Mia Ogidi, NTNs. Thanks, Mia. Still on elections. There are calls for politicians and the electorate 
to imbibe right democratic culture in consolidating good governance and development. A fallout of NTA's current affairs program Tuesday Live has discussed and stressed that politicians must recognize that leadership is about service, not financial enrichment. Talate Zurike has more. Since the return to democracy in 1999, Nigerians gear up every four years to elect their leaders. The exercise analyst says characterized with irregularities as issues such as rigging, ballot box snatching, godfatherism, vote buying, imposition of candidates and violence were almost the order of the day. But there is a change in the ugly narrative, especially with the play out at the recent election as the pattern of voting moved from party to individuals in order to advance the nation's democratic culture. It, it was a positive development because some being political and uh, party leaders, they thought the party was their personal property or their personal estate. So because of greediness and irresponsibility, they lost their states. It Simple adherence to internal democratic processes of getting the people's choice to fly the party, you know, flat. Honestly speaking, it's a serious problem. Make public offices financially unattractive. First of all, it is only in underdeveloped countries that uh, membership of the legislative houses are full-time business. It is normally part-time, and you only get sitting allowances. For others, the need for restraint on matters that overheat the polity. Uh, politicians don't always adhere to the rules. And if they do that, uh, we are not going to have issues. We're not going to blame my neck for people who are snatching bosses. Every person, whether it is this candidate E, candidate e B, candidate C, candidate Z, Anything that happens in that particular constituency, that particular politician should be held responsible. All right. The way forward, many agreed, is for a collective resolve in building right democratic culture for sustainable development. Talati Ezeriki, NTA News. Kaduna State Government has directed security agencies to ensure strict enforcement of the dusk to dawn curfew imposed on Kaduna local government area and parts of Chikun. A statement by the senior special assistant to the governor on media and publicity, Samuel Aruan, says security assessments necessitated the imposition of curfew on the communities. The dusk to dawn curfew is also extended to Kujama and Maraban Rido, both in Chikun local government area. The Cardinal State Government appeals to the affected communities to bear with the inconveniences that will be brought about by the curfew and cooperate with security agencies to restore normalcy to the area. And from Taraba State, Governor Darius Ishaku has reduced the 24-hour curfew imposed on Jalingo, the state capital, indefinitely. The curfew is now to run from 6 o'clock in the evening to 4 o'clock in the morning. A statement issued by the Chief Press Secretary to Governor Hassan, to the Governor Hassan Mijin Yua calls on the people to remain law abiding as they go on with normal businesses within the stipulated time while security agencies are to ensure strict compliance with the directive. It's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We take some messages now. The news continues shortly. Don't go away. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous, whether you do it for fun or for political gains. Real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin.
NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Welcome back. Let's turn attention to Port Harcourt where Mina is on standby with more reports. Mina, good to see you. Welcome to Port Harcourt. While elections were ongoing last Saturday, some Nigerians were being held hostage by suspected kidnappers in the bush at Ndele in Emoha Council area of River State. It took the intervention of natives to rescue six of them who were brought to NTA Port Harcourt by the chiefs of the area. Vivian. One of the six rescued victims, an aide to the secretary of Emoha Council, said more than 15 of them were abducted by unknown persons on the eve of the elections along the Rumuji axis of the east-west route and taken into captivity in Ndele family. For five good hours. So we now met um, a, a farmer, a, an elderly man. He now told the man, he was still with his gun, he now told the man to take me out. We were free by the grace of God through the power of God that I've sent through Iwe children and his boys to rescue. Chiefs of the area said the victims were rescued by the assistance of the youth and hunters in the communities. These people come from outside and only co some of our native people, some of our own boys, to carry out this type of, you know, dehumanizing act. The government and the Scott agencies should come to a roundtable conference with us with the leaders of that community so that we can we can kill this devil once and for all. Our boys this time rose up to the challenge of uh, this kidnapping thing because nobody is happy. Event authorities to intensify efforts are securing lives and property of citizens, especially with the recurrent incidents of adoption. Vivian Izadifi, NTA News. Business activities have resumed in Port Harcourt after the heightened tension that trailed the March 9th State House of Assembly elections. Chidebere Onya, who went round the metropolis, has the report. The restriction order for Saturday's governorship and State Houses of Assembly elections halted business activities notwithstanding the heightened tension that trailed INEC suspension of electoral processes in the state. Indications have shown that business activities and movements within the state is gradually picking up. Similarly, most of the schools and banks within the metropolis normal activities. I was idle in the house, doing nothing, nothing in my hand. But today, as I come out, at least I will go back with something. Uh, the customers are coming and the uh, business is moving well. So we are working very, very well. While people were seen in groups at various discussing the anticipated final election results in the state, major intra and intercity routes witnessed high volume of traffic. With normalcy returning in the capital city, residents are still awaiting the conclusion of the elections by the electoral of Ebere Onya. NTA News. The hydrocarbon pollution remediation project hybrid is set to establish a cassava processing factory at Kokoro Thai community to support the agricultural endeavors of the Goni people. Robbins Interatede reports that the initiative will complement the by some Ogoni youths who are being trained by Hyprep on the manufacturing of cassava processing machine. We apologize for that challenge there from Port Moving on now with the news. 
Edo State Commissioner of Police Mohamed Dan Malam says urgent steps will be taken to curb incessant attacks on police formations in Owan. He was in Owan East local government for an assessment of the attack on the divisional police station in Afuze. David Airey reports. Some officers of the division had gone on outside duty when the armed men attacked the station on Tuesday night. Part of the building was set ablaze while the divisional police officer Tosimani Ojo, Inspector Sado Isaac, a woman sergeant Justina Aromon, who is pregnant, and Corporal Glory David were killed by the armed men. I know that I what actually caused the problem because at the police station they couldn't get. Uh, uh, they, they couldn't carry um, uh, the gun. And we don't even actually know because they didn't remove anything. We had gunshot. Nobody knew what happened. We only had gunshot. In that one we waited there. It was then I was able to get through to my AEO and other staff. And they told me the situation that they are inside the office. They cannot come out because of the situation. But that they are all safe. And even though they shot a lot of, uh, they shot so much, uh, there was a lot of shooting. And uh, what, what they use in blowing this car, I think it's a bomb. So they were shooting sporadically for quite some time. And my, my, my staff was still inside. The attack on officers and men of the Nigerian police has become quite unusual in Owan. On the 14th of July last year, four police officers were attacked at a checkpoint in the area killed and burnt inside their patrol vehicle. On the 23rd of January this year, the APC House of Assembly candidate in Owen West, Mr. Ohio Ezomo, was kidnapped while his ugly was killed on the spot. What we are going to do now, we have a strong synergy now between the police, the Nigerian military, the DSS, and other security agents. We are assuring the members of the public that something like this would never happen under my leadership. I just took over not quite long, but we are going to look at it critically, and whoever is involved will be brought to justice. Some improvised explosive devices were recovered in the INEC premises and detonated by the police. In Afuze, David Ayre, NTA News. Our next report from Abuja says the House of Representatives has resolved to set up a committee to investigate the alleged shortfall of the 2019 general elections. The decision was reached after extensive deliberations by lawmakers Wednesday following a motion tabled under matters of urgent public importance by Representative Sunday Karimi on the declaration by INEC of inconclusive elections in six states of the Federation. Members unanimously agreed that as an evolving democracy, Nigerians' electoral laws should be amended to avoid such situation in future. Details of this and more in subsequent bulletins. An independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, must do a better study analysis at places where electoral violence and malpractices occurred and prevent reoccurrence during the forthcoming supplementary elections on March 23rd. Experts on NTS Good Morning Nigeria emphasized this while reacting to the inconclusive elections in some states at the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Oyeyemi Ajayi has the details. Reactions have continued to trail the declaration of elections in six states of the Federation as inconclusive by INEC. As some believe it is a right step in the interest of the country, some are of the view that more should have been done rather than declaring the elections inconclusive. Though some NTA correspondents highlight some challenges confronted during the elections. More people, uh, more of the ballot came in than those that actually presented themselves for accreditation. And then the second reason was the abandonment or the non-use of the uh, smart card reader. And there were a few number of security personnel in many police centers. There are some without a single policeman. Some analysts criticized that for an election to be declared inconclusive, there should be judicial inclusion with proper verification of evidences. I think it's more of a judicial act than an administrative act because we are talking about stopping the, a process in the middle of the road, a process that, is, that has already begun. Now, in River State, there was security presence but there was now 
other security presence which countered. The police is the lead security agency for elections. Mm -hmm. But in between, there were, I can't say now whether they were state actors or non-state actors, but they were in uniforms. Politicians and their irresponsibility needs to be called out by every citizen of this country. And we need to encourage the, uh, the, the electoral management body to stick to the rules. The guest urged INEC to ensure that the forthcoming supplementary elections must be credible while advising the people to become and law abiding during the process. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. And from Kano, Emir of Kano, Mala Muhammad Sanusi II, has asked the people of Kano State to remain steadfast and supportive to democratic processes. The Emir made a plea in a special broadcast to the people of the state on the need to live in peace, irrespective of political differences. Mansour Aliu Hassan reports. The need for peace to prevail among the people of Kano State necessitated the Emir of Kano, Malam Muhammad Sanusi II, to make passionate appeal for harmonious coexistence. He said Kano must remain a reference point on account of its cosmopolitan nature. We urge the people of Kano to remember that our great state has a reputation and the world is watching us. We should avoid any actions that will bring this state to ridicule and reduce the esteem with which other people hold Kano. Emir Muhammad Sanusi II urged people in the state to remain calm and pursue their legitimate businesses. Meanwhile, former governor of Kano State and senator-elect for Kano Central, Malam Ibrahim Shikaru, also called on the people in the state not to disrupt peace on account of inconclusive election. I therefore wish to urge all our fellow citizens of Kano, men and women, particularly supporters of various political parties to exercise restraint and exercise extreme patience and tolerance. In Kano, Mansur Ali Yohassan, NTA News. Sakwato is our next port of call and here is Umar with reports making the rounds in that zone. Over to you. Media. Welcome to Seats of the Caliphate. Sokoto State Police Command has assured families of officers that lost their lives in active service that the culprits will be traced and brought to book. Commissioner of Police Koji Amin Kwabi stated this while presenting cash assistance from Sokoto State Government to the families of two police officers. Shou Muhammad Detti completes the story. Every job has its own negative consequences, either in the course of carrying out the duty or after retirement. In the case of police officers, the most difficult and inevitable negative consequence is losing life in the course of carrying out their duty. ASP Abakar Mesaje and Sergeant Osman Ibrahim are the two police officers that lost their lives in an ambush by armed bandits in the eastern local government area of Sokoto State. Mishnah Police Koja Aminu, while condoling the families of the two deceased officers, described death as inevitable, urging them to be at a part of a loss. The assistance from the Sokoto State government is to reduce pains and tension to the deceased family. Take solace in the fact that it is God that gives and it is God that takes. And I pray that he gives you that energy to bear the loss. While of one of the deceased police officers, Mariam Abakar Misaji, eldest son, Sergeant Sani Abubakar, and Nipu Hawa'u, describe their death as will of God, praying Allah to forgive and grant them genital freedoms. In a brief ceremony, Commissioner Police Koji presented the cash assistance of one million naira to each of the deceased family. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. The policies and programs of President Muhammadu Buhari had impacted positively on the lives of Nigerians. Wife of Kebi State Governor Aisha Atiku Bagudu stated this at an event to celebrate the victory of the president at the presidential election. Abdul Jalil Muhammad Bawa reports. 
Addressing the gathering, Haji Aisha Atiku Bawudu explained that President Muhammad Buhari anti corruption policies had made impact in the executive, legislative, and judicial arm of government, saying that the president installed due process, probity, and accountability in all sectors. She also expressed confidence on the ability of President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Atiku Bawudu to deliver Nigeria and Kevin State to the next level of development. Haji Aisha also acknowledged the contribution of women and youth during the electioneering campaigns. Speaking at the event, some stakeholders commended Nigerians for giving the president the second term mandate and assured them that President Muhammad Buhari will not fail them. They said APC government will continue to support women and youth empowerment programs, health issues and education among others. Mbinin Kebi, Abdujalil Muhammad Bawa, NTA News. That's all from this end. Let's now join Maiduguri for more news in that zone. Thank you, Sadia, and welcome to Maiduguri. Borno State Governor Kashim Shatima has expressed appreciation to the electorate in the state for the massive votes given to the APC candidates in the just concluded 2019 general elections. He said this following the declaration of Professor Babagana Omar Zulu as the winner of the governorship election in the state. Mohamed Goni reports. Governor Kati Shetima described the massive vote given to Professor Babagana Omar as unprecedented in the political history of Borno and expressed appreciation to the people for their unflinching support to the APC. Well, I'm overwhelmed with emotions and we have to pay tribute to Allah. And to the people of Borno, to our teaming supporters, our presidents and friends of Borno, to our party leaders who spent sleepless nights to ensure that we achieved victory. But I'm going to assure citizens of Borno that Professor Babangana Umara will continue with the good work the present administration has been doing in the state. Meanwhile, the governor-elect, Professor Babagana Umara, has called on aspirants who contested with him on the platform of the APC to join hands to entrench internal democracy, even as he enjoined candidates of other political parties to put party differences aside in the overall interests of Borno and work with the APC-led government in the quest to reposition the state. Our administration of continuity of the security of lives and the top of our values. The APC state chairman, Alibukar Dalori, and other party stalwarts have also expressed their appreciation for the massive show of support to the APC in the state. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, and Following the official declaration of the 2019 governorship election result, where Professor Babagana Omar Zulum of APC emerged winner, residents of Medugri took to the streets in jubilation. Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa captured mood of the city and now reports. With the announcement of election results over, some youths embarked on celebrations along streets in Medugri, while others said the outcome was good, turning out in their favor. Uh, it's a jubilation uh, for us here in Borno and uh, uh, it's a period of consolidation and continuity. With continuity, there are a lot of progress and development. So we are hoping for the best with Professor Babagana Umar Abzulum. We thank God that we have an elected governor currently in Amboruno State, and the whole process was actually a success. This is the first time in the history of Borno we are having a well-educated person, a professor indeed, that is going to be our governor in Borno State, and is surely going to make Borno one of the best cities in the state. Going by the track record of the person who has just won the uh, governorship election here in the state, he's a man of integrity, he's a man who we believe will transform the state. He's somebody that we believe will take this state to the greater height. Even though the nature of the celebration is not like that of the last presidential and national assembly elections, residents in Meduguri are thankful to God owing to the fact that the candidates of their choice made it at the just concluded governorship and state assembly elections in Meduguri, Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa, NTA News. Thank you, Abu Bakr, and that's our contribution from Meduguri Nationwide.
continues with Libya in Abuja. We apologize for the poor audio quality from our Medjugorje studios. We now move on with more reports. Wife of the President Aisha Muhammad Buhari has expressed gratitude to the Nigerian women and youths for their support towards the victory of President Buhari during the February 2019 general elections. This was coming at a dinner in Daura, the hometown of the President, organized by Mrs. Buhari under the auspices of Women and Youth's presidential campaign team. Set House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. The dinner was organized by the wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, in honor of the supporters of the president residing in his hometown, Daura, and the entire people of Katala State. It was meant to celebrate the victory of President Muhammad Buhari in the 2019 general elections and it attracted the participation of people from far and near, comprising members of the All Progressives Congress, party supporters, and other well wishers. While expressing gratitude for their massive support towards the victory of President Muhammad Buhari, the wife of the president called on them to continue to give their support for more dividend of democracy. I would like to thank the Daura people and the entire people of Kasina State for their maximum support. For 16 years, there are so many people that are here tonight that never changed their mind right from inception or right from the day my husband joined politics up to today. We thank them so much. May God reward them. Other speakers reaffirmed their support towards the good policies and programs of President Buhari of improving the nation's economy. I would like to extend my gratitude to Her Excellency, the wife of the President, for honoring us with this great dinner of victory. The victory is for, for the fight against corruption and all the wonderful foundation he has laid for this country. Mrs. Buhari has since returned to Abuja. Ali Kabir, NTA News. The Independent National Electoral Commission has released results of the concluded March 9th 2019 governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Results in six states were declared inconclusive, while that in River State was suspension. Timothy Yusuf in this report gives a breakdown of why supplementary elections will take place in the six states concerned. We'll give you that report in our subsequent bulletin. Moving on now. The Buhari Media Organization says President Muhammad Buhari will, at the end of his second and final term in office, be quit to Nigeria, a very robust democratic space that many Nigerians will be proud of. A statement by its chairman, Nii Akin Siju, and Secretary Cassidy Madweke Biemu says, this is obvious from the president's deliberate non-interference in the just-concluded governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Buhari did not go out of his way to ensure that the All Progressives Congress APC got undue advantage in last Saturday's elections. The group who said President Buhari deserves credit for this principled standard also pointed out that the president's non-interference shows that he is a true Democrat that keeps to his words, adding that President Buhari is on record to have said that Nigerians were free to vote for political parties of their choice at a time, key APC members were openly ex expressing support for governorship candidates on the platform of other parties. Therefore, it is not surprising that the results so far announced by INEC officials largely reflected the will of the people, regardless of whether APC won or not. We now go back to our last report, which says the Independent National Electoral Commission has released results of the concluded March 9th, 2019 governorship and state houses of assembly election. Results in six states were declared inconclusive, while that in River State was suspension. Timothy Yusuf in this report gives a breakdown of why supplementary elections will take place in the six states concerned. Six states declared inconclusive include Plateau, Adamawa, 
Bochi, Benue, Sokoto, and Kano states. In Plateau State, the margin of a lead of 44,929 between the APC and the PDP candidate is less than 49,377 cancelled votes. Simon Lalong of APC pulled a total of 583,225 votes, while Jerry Husseini of PDP scored 538,326,471 votes, above 334,995 of Jibril Abindo of the APC, thereby leaving the margin of 32,476, with cancelled votes standing at 40,988. In Bauchi State, Senator Bala Mohammed of the PDP pulled 469,512 ahead of 465,453 scored by Mohammed Abubakar of the APC. Cancelled votes in the election is 45,312. In line with sections 26 and 53 of the Electoral Act, and because the margin of lead is not in excess of the total number of registered voters, Samuel Otom of the PDP in Benue State scored 410,576 ahead of Emmanuel Jimé of the APC who pulled 329,022 leaving the margin of 81,544 with cancelled votes standing at 121,019. In Kano State, Abba Yusuf of the PDP pulled 1,014,474 votes ahead of 987,819, scored by Abdullahi Umar Ganduje of the APC. There is a margin of 26,655 votes in between them, while cancelled votes stood at 128,572. Aminu Waziri Tambuwal of the PDP in Sokoto scored 489,558 votes ahead of APC Saliu Ahmed who pulled 486,145, leaving the margin of 3,413 votes between them. The number of cancelled votes in the election stood at 75,403. As a result of this, I cannot conclude on the winner. So I declare this inconclusive. Away from the inconclusive election, the Independent National Electoral Commission suspended all electoral processes in River State until further notice. The commission explains that the decision was due to widespread violence in the state during the March 9 governorship and state assembly polls. The commission also claimed some of its staff were held hostage while materials including result sheets were reportedly destroyed. Uh, the commission decided to suspend all the processes in River State based on credible reports uh, from our field officers uh, to the effect that some of our um, field officers have been targeted for arrest, uh, some of them have been kidnapped. In the meantime, those who lost in the election have continued to reject the election results, while the People's Democratic Party is alleging partisanship on the part of the Independent National Electoral Commission. The party's National Publicity Secretary and Director of Media and Publicity of Presidential Campaign Organization, Kola Logbondion, addressed a media briefing in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Still to come, spots update after these messages. Join us again. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the role of the media in election coverage. Exclusive on the National Broadcasting Commission, its mandate as the sole regulator of Nigerian media. Dr. Toba Daba Den and Ishak Modibokau now. This edition also features the king of stand-up comedy in Nigeria, Ali Baba, MTA standard to be ready for election transmission after decades of abandonment. Find out from the DG, transactional elections in our political space, and evil wind that blows no good. DG, National Orientation Agency calls us. Pretty guy, your indispensable companion x-rays the impact of social media on election yarding process as electorates present their expectations from incoming government. Meet some TV professionals behind the screen and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion.
Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. For stories around the globe, let's join Ilyasu Ali Yakubo. Thank you for joining me on this segment of the news. The United Nations investigation says violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo last year may amount to crimes against humanity. It says at least 500 persons were killed, including families born to life in their homes and a two-year-old who was thrown into a septic tank. Ethnic violence broke out when one community wanted to bury one of their traditional chiefs on another community's land. Meanwhile, the Federal Aviation Administration has said it will not ground the Boeing 737 mass aircraft despite mounting pressure and banning of the plane by numerous countries. The United States regulators said a review showed no systemic performance issues with the aircraft. The Ethiopian Airlines plane crash is the second fatal accident involving the 737 MAX 8 model in five months. Once again, just as the last time, the Brexit deal was rejected in Parliament. Reaction by European Union leaders was prompt and coordinated. European politicians tweeted to say how disappointed they were as businesses and citizens across the European Union and United Kingdom now face more agonizing uncertainty and the vote in the House of Commons brought to a no deal Brexit. The EU's chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, best summed up the European mood when he insisted the EU had done everything it could and that the deadlock could only be solved in the UK and there will be no more negotiation. Well, that's it on this segment. The news continues. My name is Ilyasu Ali Yaku. And now sports. New office building of the Nigeria Football Federation, NFA, is yet to be occupied almost six years after inauguration in 2013. Among